This meeting is being recorded and or transcribed. Okay, um, just a quick housekeeping before we get going. Uh, we're gonna, we'll get a call to order and then we'll move into a roll call and then because of timing and, and class schedule, Dr. Malhus from uh, Christian Brothers was unable to join us in October. He is on with us this morning. He's going to give a, an update on how Christian Brothers University um, used their grant money from last year. So uh, we'll get him on the agenda. We got him on the agenda first, and then we'll move into regular business. So we can get a call to order, please. Mr. Chairman, your first meeting. Hey, thank you, Michael. Um, the December 2nd meeting of the Board of Architectural and Engineering Examiners is called to order. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> We're going to a roll call. Mr. Bursai. Here. Mr. Brickta. Here. Mr. Thompson. We know Mr. Thompson is absent. Mr. Parker. Here. Mr. Campbell. Here. Mr. Barrick. Here. Ms. Doss. Here. Mr. Tibbs. Here. Mr. Wagster. Here. Mr. Hathcote. I am here in service to my chairman. And Mr. King. Here. All right, Mr. Thompson is the only member absent today. So, I take that back. Uh, um, acknowledged guest, we have uh, Dr. Malhus with us. And um, I don't believe we have any of the professional societies joining us today. So that could uh, that'll punch a hole in our, our agenda. But uh, are there any agenda changes or amendments? No? Okay. Uh, Michael? Sir? Uh, we probably need to add the definitions committee to the committee group. Yes, sir, we do. Okay, and one other item before we get to Dr. Malhus uh, the minutes from the 2021 or October board meeting. Well, uh, would you all like to we want a motion to approve? There okay. you go. Second. Do we have I'll a second? second? Uh, I'll second. Okay, any discussion? I will need to abstain since I wasn't here. Okay. All right, Mr. Campbell abstaining. All right, all in favor of approval? Aye. Aye. Okay. Sounds like approved. That sounded good to me. Yeah, that sounded good. Uh, just a reminder. Uh, but we had some some microphone issues. If you could speak, make sure your microphone's pointed at you and speak into it. Uh, it doesn't pick up so well when you turn your heads. I know it's natural to want to turn and look at somebody you're talking to, but um, okay. So um, with that done, I would like to um, welcome Dr. Malhus from Christian Brothers University, and. Um, uh, Ask Dr. Malhus to take the floor and give us a report on how Christian Brothers used the grant money from last year. So, Dr. Malhus. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, inviting me to your December meeting. Uh, I would like to upload, uh, start the PowerPoint. Let me see here. Uh, I Dr. think I use shared content, right? Uh, Dr. Malhus, we, we don't have a, a visual here, so we won't be able to see your PowerPoint. Sorry about oh, you that. will not be able to see my PowerPoint? No, sir. Sorry about that. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, then I'll uh, just uh, go through it and tell you what's going on. Uh, and basically, I would like to give you some updates about our school. So, uh, again, my name is Ferris Malhas. I'm the dean of the Gadomsky School of Engineering. Uh, uh, I would like to update you in a few uh, positive notes on our, uh, the progress of our school. First, uh, we just had our ABIT visit in October uh, for uh, assessment of our programs. And uh, I am glad uh, to report that we've, uh, we've uh, had no, uh, any, any kind of concern, uh, any kind of uh, issues regarding our programs. And uh, as a matter of fact, they were complementary of our programs. And uh, I expect we received a draft statement from ABIP 
indicating that we will be getting uh, six years renewal for our accreditation. So we're very excited about that for all our programs, chemical engineering, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, and uh, uh, chemical engineering. Um, well, one new development, we've just, uh, we've, uh, over the past year, we've finalized the design of a new innovation engineering lab building for 36,000 square feet. And uh, we are now in the, in the silent uh, phase of the fundraising campaign. And really, the goal of this new engineering building is uh, to create a state-of-the-art engineering facility and establish an innovation lab with the aim of promoting innovation and entrepreneurship, and also to enhance and expand and improve our existing lab facilities. And uh, this will help us also brand and promote our engineering programs in a very positive way. Um, and also will give us uh, the facilities necessary to to enhance and expand high-impact STEM outreach activities and allow faculty to really engage in more meaningful research. Um, so uh, this uh, 36,000 square feet building will, will really expand the, the spaces for all uh, engineering programs, and we're excited about it. The only thing now is to just to raise the money. So, <laughs> just a simple. So we're working hard on that. Um, uh, the, the next thing I want to share with you is that we have now uh, uh, submitted a proposal for new uh, pro academic programs, one in construction management, uh, one in uh, unmanned area systems engineering technology program, and one in uh, robotics and mechatronics engineering technology program. We feel that robotics and mechatronics and unmanned area systems uh, is, is something that's going to be very critical and very important in the coming 10 years. And so we, we ventured into the engineering technology domain with these two programs. Um, in terms of uh, enrollment, we've been, we, we, really this year we've been hit hard with the COVID, and we are really now uh, recovering from that uh, 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 low enrollment of this past fall. Uh, we had a very good graduate engineering enrollment that really compensated for that. But uh, we really, we, we're really working hard to uh, recruitment and uh, trying to increase the number of students uh, coming to engineering program at CBU. In terms of the uh, 2021 grant, we have uh, uh, we have spent uh, uh, about uh, six thousand dollars on on uh, professional fee grants and awards. And on capital purchases, we, we spend about uh, $8,456. Uh, in total, was it for about $14,800. And uh, the reason we did not spend all the money, we uh, somehow I was a newcomer and I was waiting for the check to arrive. So we were delayed until March to start uh, really expanding some of the funds that you uh, provided us. Uh, so by the time we get to the end of June, we had a residual, uh, basically, that we couldn't, we couldn't spend. Um, in terms of the uh, equipment that we bought, we bought, it, uh, really, it was primarily for the civil engineering program. We bought uh, what, something called the micro deval apparatus, which is really measures abrasion resistance of aggregates, which is a, a new way of t testing for uh, abrasion of aggregates in uh, in, 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 in aggregates using concrete mixes, and uh, it's a really very neat machine. Uh, it's been put to use this past few months, and we bought also for the geodetic lab, we bought uh, surveying uh, total station and its accessories as part of the grant money approved by, by your board. Uh, as far as uh, the new proposal, the, the, the big change here is that we have included the uh, uh, in, in terms of our requests, uh, uh, so partial cover support for the student competition travels. So we, we allocated about $4,200 uh, in our proposal for student competitions, and we allocated about uh, $6,100 for licensure and certification. We also put, uh, since we're getting into the robotics uh, domain, uh, with, uh, with the different courses and a new program, uh, our uh, request for equipment was totally 
focused on uh, robotics. So we submitted uh, 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 a uh, Sorry. Is there a question or can I? No question. That um, was uh, just a quick interruption. Yeah. No, that's fine. Okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> So we have about uh, we've submitted a request for about ninety-seven hundred dollars for the, the upcoming uh, proposal uh, to, to, cover, to cover the the purchase of uh, uh, robotics uh, equipment for the robotics lab. Uh, our students will be traveling. Uh, we have students traveling uh, with the IEEE I robotic competition to Mobile, Alabama. Our ASC students will be traveling to Jonesboro, Arkansas, for the competition. And our uh, mechanical engineering will be traveling to Huntsville, Alabama, for their competitions. Um, so the total co cost of our student competition is about $13,500, and we are requesting in our new proposal about $4,200 to be uh, provided by the, 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 the grant money. Also, we, as I said, the capital equipment was focused on robotics uh, and uh, all the equipments we are buying are, are really intended to be used in uh, robotic classes. Uh, we have uh, submitted the, the request for uh, robotic arms, uh, OLED robots, and uh, Zumo robots. And that will really create a, a whole la robotic lab uh, in, the, in, the, in, in our, uh, in our uh, uh, temporary location for the robotics equipments. We are planning to establish uh, purely robotics lab in the coming uh, two years. And as far as uh, FE and certification uh, uh, proposal, we, we've, uh, we've asked for, uh, for about $6,100 uh, for FE exam, about 1750 and uh, for the Lean Sigma uh, Yellow Belt uh, certification, about 2600 and for the FAA exam, about 800 that total, that's about 6,100. So with that, I give, uh, I give you a total summary of, uh, uh, I wish I had a ch chance to show you in the PowerPoint. I had uh, great photos of the new engineering building, but <laughs> next time, we'll show it to you next year. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Malhaus. That, that was a great report. Um, glad to see the, the great activity that you have there um, in the engineering schools. Anybody have any questions for Dr. Malhaus, Alton? I don't have a question, just a notation. Dr. Malhaus, I, I would, um, I, you may not be aware of this, but uh, the Grants to Higher Education Committee uh, has approved, and, the, and this board has approved an addition to our allocation for next year. So I would strongly encourage you to uh, to uh, go down your priority list maybe a little further than you have and uh, oh, really? okay. ask ask for additional items. It, you can't over ask, but you can under ask. I would advise you and counsel you not to under ask. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, Alton. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll discuss it further with Mike. See what, 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 can, what can we do about the, our proposal. Great. Okay. Uh, we have uh, Robert Campbell has a question. This is probably a little bit more convoluted question, but uh, obviously you're starting a, uh, looking at megatronics and uh, doing a robotics lab with the uh, with with part of the funds. I know MTSU started that about oh six seven. I can't remember now. Eight years ago, and they did yeah. it after they had talked to you know a lot of the local manufacturers that were moving into the area. Have you all? Right talk to like the Ford Motor Company or any of those, uh, you know, I know you've got we, are, we are reaching out to them. Okay. Perfect. I mean, this is exactly what we're trying, planning to do. Okay, good deal. Because I, new, uh, well, just, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that was very helpful to them in tailoring their program and making sure that they got uh, the, the direction that, uh, you know, the bigger employers were using. And I think they actually had some other, you know, equipment swap, whatever. They had other things going. So, it might help you leverage some of that, uh, just from from what I remember they did a few years ago. So just just a comment. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I appreciate the comments because I think uh, 
You are right. We, ha- we have a lot of opportunities in the greater Memphis area to uh, seek out support from the industry to support this program. I think that this one and the unmanned area systems will be really uh, very unique also. That, that will, will really uh, create a lot of interest in the industry, especially you know, people who are now using unmanned area systems to the, for delivery or for uh, whatever. So th- these two programs are intended to look into the future and uh, really uh, help create educational opportunities for our students that will support uh, the industries in the region. So it's very relevant as we did our analysis uh, as we developed these programs. Great. Hey, uh, <clears throat> Alton, do you have a, any other comments? Oh, sorry, no. That's okay. Okay, <clears throat> any other questions or comments for Dr. Malhas? Okay, well, Dr. Malhas, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you so much. For, for your report this morning. Uh, it's great to, for us to know um, what, what's happening with the, not only the, the funds that, um, that are provided through the board, but just the direction of your whole program. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, and thank you all for uh, allowing me to, uh, to present to you the updates. Thanks. Okay. Have a great day. You too. Thank Thanks. you. Okay. Um, we can move on to professional society reports. We will we will have one. <clears throat> I see Nathan out there. Um, you, you know, you may want to give the unabridged version today since you're the only society represented. So. Hold, hold on now. <laughs> Hit the speak button, not the mute button. Uh, we'll do the Reader's Digest version, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Okay, Chairman, thank members, you. Uh, I'm Nathan Ridley. I'm here on behalf of the Tennessee chapter of the American Society of Landscape Architects. And we do have a pretty good buzz on today because we're just coming off our national meeting here in Nashville. About 3,700 registrants showed up in our city. And by all accounts, it, you know, there are always some glitches and those things, but by all accounts, uh, it, was a, it was a good event. Um, it was fun for me as not being a design professional to see so many students that the various chapters had supported and, and to give them the opportunity to come. And it warmed the cockles of my hearts when the national CEO says we want to build a, a, an association that's an advocacy association because for all design professionals, you all know how important that is. Um, back to the more mundane of legislative stuff, since the last time I talked to you all, we've had not one but two special or extraordinary legislative sessions. One that Mr. Campbell mentioned about the mega site in West Tennessee. And I'm not sure, here in Nashville, sometimes we, we get a, I don't know, we, we try, we take things a little more in stride, but you have to understand the city of Spring Hill, Tennessee, down on the Murray County, Williamson County border had a population of about a thousand before General Motors located there. And on the most recent census numbers, they're at 50,000. Just to give you the impact this is going to be for West Tennessee, Stanton, Tennessee, the lo- closest city to the mega site property, has a population of 438. And that sort of helps you understand why part of the biggest part of the extraordinary session for Ford was to set up a governing structure for the site. It's a huge site. It's 4,100 acres, and it's relatively flat, which was part of its charm. But, but the governance was going to be hard. So the state owns the property and they're going to govern the site. It's almost like creating another little city there, but it's a state entity rather than a local government entity. Um, the, the appointing authorities, Governor Lee's already made some of his appointments. I believe Speaker McNally's made his. I don't believe Speaker Sexton has quite yet. Um, it's December now and in, in, in a, 60 days ago, the Ford folks were thinking they're going to, they're ready to start to work. So um, for our state, it's not just a West Tennessee thing. For our state, that's a, that's a, big, it's a big deal. <laughs> um, the second session was more uh, politically oriented rather than the nuts and bolts of state government. It dealt with COVID 
and I could spend the next hour talking on what what they worked on and tried to do and didn't do and did do and going to get sued about, but I'm not. Um, just know that those for for the, uh, those of y'all who work with big employers, the the ability to require vaccination and mask and all the things that we wrestled with is still sort of in limbo. Um, there's. Uh, I, I, <laughs> lawyers have wasted many cartridges of ink and reams of paper trying to write about the federal government and the supremacy clause, and I think in the end that will probably prevail, but right now a lot of that stuff's bogged down in the courts and a lot of uncertainty about new variants and things like that. And our political friends, they read those news stories as well, and they're a reactive group. Um, so we're not going to talk about that anymore. Uh, the regular session will start in January. On January the 11th, they'll probably go to about the 1st of May. Um, it's always important. They, the only bill they have to pass is the budget, the appropriations bill that flows into our grant things that we talk about. So that's all a big pot of soup. Um, something that will dominate the first couple of weeks will be redistricting. Usually voters choose their elected officials, but on these three bills, elected officials get to choose their voters because they'll redraw the lines because y'all remember every 10 years with the census they have to the districts need to be about the same size because my vote should count just as much as mr campbell's so if there are 10 people that live in my house you got you got to do the math for that to all work y'all understand that and it sounds mathematically it's easy to do politically it's the hardest thing they work on it's intensely partisan it's intensely personal i've seen people fight over a corner lot i want that lot in my district because that guy puts up a yard sign for me <laughs> it's fascinating and it's pretty opaque you don't get to see much of that that's an old staffer story i had i said representative I'm just making up a name. Representative Jones, why are you so upset about that? That guy's got the best corner lot, you know, <laughs> in a 10 acres. So it's fascinating to watch the calculus that they use. Generally, though, just the, from the 30,000 foot level, rural West Tennessee is going to lose a state house seat. Shelby County will probably lose a house seat. And Upper East Tennessee will lose a house seat. And they'll all be here in Middle Tennessee. They'll either be in Williamson, Wilson, Sumner counties or, or Rutherford will pick up a house seat probably. Um, the Senate will just all, they won't, you won't see that dramatic losses, but they'll all lean to Middle Tennessee where the population in our collar counties around Nashville has been so big. Um, on the micro level, our, our, our chapter will have our executive committee meeting next week and we will, um, I don't anticipate We just try to protect our flanks, uh, for, and we work closely with the other professional societies. Happy to respond to your questions. Went way too long. <laughs> Any questions for Nathan? Thank you all very all right, much. Thank you, you, Nathan. Did. Excellent report. Nathan, uh, I, Nathan, I don't have a question per se, but I want to thank you for being at the the conference because it was it was interesting how many people said to me who know that I'm on the board said that we noticed that Nathan Ridley has been here and apparently you were participating and having a good time with people and you made you made a great impression which is certainly uh, understood and you always do but thank you for being there that means a lot to the landscape architects of Tennessee great thanks Nathan Don good morning everyone uh, I'm Don Baltimore uh, general counsel and lobbyist for Tennessee interior design education and advocacy uh, I have nothing more to report today other than I'll just second what Nathan said and uh, just to show my age when I was with the uh, Legislative Council of the General Assembly back in the mid-70s and we did the district and, and uh, after the census came out uh, it wasn't done with com computer programs. We not only didn't have the programs, we didn't have computers then either so it was <laughs> maps, maps and sheets of paper with census but uh it's good to see you i want to wish everyone happy holidays uh we the uh the tennessee idea have no uh plans at this moment to introduce and uh, push any legislation we'll be watching for any and, and its impact on interior designers uh, also we're here to help the board and the other associations uh, in whatever capacity is needed during the session uh, and also, I'd like to uh, let you know it was a little bit late this year, but we did have the governor issue uh, 
and, and want to thank him for issuing a proclamation designating once again uh, October is Interior Design Awareness Month. It dovetails with uh, October also being Fire Safety Month and this is for uh, professional interior designers and their contribution to the public health, safety, and welfare. Thank you, Don. Any questions or comments for Don? Don, I would just like to thank you for uh, coming today and look forward to uh, working with you next year. And uh, hopefully we can get this definition uh, worked out. I'm very excited about it. And uh, <clears throat> we'll, we'll talk again soon. Hey, very good. Thing. Thank you so much. Issue that's been around a while. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks, Don. Um, Ashley and Casey aren't here today. We'll miss them. Um, so we don't have an AIA or ACC TSPE report. But what you let, let me add just one thing. Yeah. Just as a this is for um, uh, that Casey did mention. She was in a Knoxville chapter meeting. Um, the uh, state of t the. Tennessee Society of Professional Engineers has basically separated from the National Society of Professional Engineers um, to where we have a state-only organization. Uh, there were several reasons for that, but one of them was uh, there were some things they did that they were not, the, the Tennessee and other states were not included. It was very national centric and they didn't seek out the our input or others input when they did that give time uh, and due consideration and the other thing is uh, just from a, a support standpoint for many many years uh, it doesn't appear that NSP has given that support so you the only reason I've mentioned that is in this group it doesn't really change anything uh, and, and and from an advocacy level, Casey will be there, um, but you may see TSP reference more than NSP um, things uh, coming forward. So I just want everybody to kind of see that. If you if you saw that and thought, well, that's a little weird, uh, uh, but that's that's what the board the TSP board board voted, um, and I, it seems to have pretty good support. Uh, across the, the the people that I've talked to, so that's one of the things she mentioned, and I just thought it would be good to to let the board know, just in case that popped up on somebody's radar somewhere. <clears throat> that's that is good. Thanks, Robert, for stepping in a little bit for Casey there. Uh, any other comments on professional reports? Okay, well, let's move to legal case reports, Stuart. Morning, everyone. Uh, Number one on the legal report is 2021-065481. Uh, the respondent's license expired in November of 2020, and they admitted the stamping plans on the project in July of 2021. Um, they said it was an oversight and immediately stopped work. They have reinstated their license as of September 23, 2021. This was reviewed by board member Stephen King uh, mitigating factors is they immediately stopped work in Tennessee and they reinstated their license. Aggravating factors, of course, are practicing on expired license. The recommendation is a civil penalty of $500 for practicing on expired license. And I also forgot to add uh, to take the laws and rules exam. So that would be my recommendation on this. Okay, do we have a motion? Okay, then move. Uh, second. second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Number two is 2021 um, There's a lot of dates and numbers on this, so hopefully it wasn't too confusing. Um, the respondent was mailed an audit letter uh, for the audit period of um, November 2018 through October 2020. Um, they submitted 34 and a half hours um, of PDH. And after an administrative review, it was determined that some of the PDH did not qualify and proof of exact hours were missing. Um, the respondent was given 90 days to resubmit and to clarify uh, the requested missing information Respondent subsequently submitted the necessary information, but it was more than 90 days, so this complaint was open. The respondent, in his response to the complaint, stated he must have missed that previous communication 
and had no intention to ignore. Uh, when we reviewed, uh, this was also reviewed by board member Blair Parker, um, the original submission contained more than the required 24 PDH necessary and was approved uh, shortly after the respondent submitted. Um, the additional information was submitted two days after the 90 day deadline and approved uh, subsequently, but um, we just felt like it, this respondent was already compliant through the audit period. Um, so um, this recommendation is to close. Okay, thanks Stuart. Um, do I have a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to a close. Okay, in a second. I'll second. All right, any discussion? All right, all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes. That is the shortest and quickest legal report I've ever had on this board. <laughs> Thank you, Stuart. So Merry Christmas. <laughs> That's the shortest I've ever Appreciate been on that. with, too. And maybe it's a sign, Stuart. Times are all right. looking up. I, I, I am putting these people uh, in check. So <laughs> Let, let's move on before another case pops up. That's right. Let's uh, go. <laughs> director's report. I think it's our new chair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hurry, hurry. Okay. Uh, so first thing that I have for you is financial data. Um, the, the first sheet is something I've not submitted before. This is an attempt to, I think, answer what Alton has been talking about. I'm not sure if this satisfies that or if it doesn't, but I, I believe this may be what you were Consider referring. me satisfied, yes. Okay. I, I, I've scrolled through here before we started just to see, and thank you for including this information. Yeah, so this is the, the first sheet is a detailed expenditure sheet. Um, if you look at it, I, I don't know, there's not a, a lot of extra detail, but there's some some smaller additional detail as compared to um, the regular NPS page that we I've been submitting to you. Uh, so on the second page then is the regular sheet that you're used to seeing with with all of the uh, different colored lines on it. Um, happy to answer any questions about any of the financial data. Okay. Uh, let's see. The next thing I have for you all is the uh, conferences. Um, since we last met, I think there have been a couple of conferences that have been attended. I believe that some reports would be in order. But before we do that, I would like to um, I would like to ask the permission of the board to attend uh, if and if Maria as well in cases where she can. There is an NCES Southern Zone meeting. I believe it's in Oklahoma City. It's next year, but it's um, it's close enough next year that um, I should go ahead and ask you now, so we can start the travel authorization process in internally, uh, as well as an MBE meeting at the NCES headquarters in Greenville, which I believe is coming up quickly in February. Uh, the Oklahoma City one is not until spring, but um, the Greenville meeting is in February. That is a fully funded by the NCES meeting. Uh, they'll cover my mileage, hotel, all that sort of stuff. Um, and I think those are the only two right now that are they're close and pending. So uh, I'll, I'll answer any questions I can if you all have any. Otherwise, I would ask your... Uh, your permission to, I believe we would spend some money on um, the Southern Zone meeting in Oklahoma City, and that would include member delegates as well as Maria and myself. I'm sorry. Robert, uh, are you and Ricky both going to the one in Greenville? Has he been funded or is it just you? I believe I, I, you'd have to answer that. I only got the one email for the MBE meeting, so. Right. Yeah. Yes. They're paying for travel and hotel and incidentals and that sort of thing. So but do we need to include both of you in a, any kind of approval recommendation? Well, I, you know, uh, it's interesting because it's not like we're approving anything because right. we're not spending any money. So I guess, yes. Well, let's, let's put it both together and just say that uh, it, with the 
you know, we we would represent the board. And I think that's the only part of the motion is yep. to give you authority to represent us or, or Correct. approval to represent us on that. Okay. Yep. So I'll go ahead and make that motion that we approve uh, Michael and Ricky to go to the EPE uh, meeting in Greenville, South Carolina and represent uh, the board uh, during those those meetings. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. Blair second. Okay. Any questions or discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you all. Second question on Southern Zone. Yes, sir. Uh, do we need to do that today, or is that something we need to do in the next engineering committee meeting and decide who needs to go or – after this meeting or so i don't want to take up the board's time while we're sitting here trying to figure out who who goes and doesn't go or how many people we can send but i certainly think it's worthwhile since we've not had an in-person ncws meeting to to get as many of us that can go to go because um, i think hopefully some of the restrictions will be lifted at that time but again we can do that after this meeting or do whatever michael i don't want to well it's so i just pulled up the email and uh, the deadline in the memo is January 12th for the funded delegate form. Um, we could That's do that. Funded, funded by NCES. Yes. Yeah. So we could do that. I, I guess we could do that real quick if you wanted to. Um, this is an oversight on my part. I probably should have put it on the committee meeting for yesterday. Um, so we could do that now, or we could we could do a special committee meeting at some other time. Or I, I have two questions about that that might affect that. Uh, Rob might get um, funded in a separate category as being a new board member who has not been to an NCES meeting yet. I don't know that. Uh, I can't remember if that applied to the zone zone meeting, but it's worth a question. And then I don't know if they would fund me for being on the MBA committee. I don't know. This says that as an MBA, I don't need to indicate that I'm a funded delegate because I'm already funded. So yeah. It's right. So the funded the funded would be our en engineer committee board committee members, and I don't I wouldn't want to take a spot if I've already got funding. Frank. Uh, Michael, I just wanted to bring up that I know our next meeting's in February, and uh, the NCARB has a regional meeting in March, um, and usually Brian uh, attend that. Um, the thing that I don't know is where it is, because I think it's still TBA on, on the emails that I get. This is the March 3rd. Yeah, it says all it's got is a whole kind of like save the date. Right. We've got it scheduled for March 3rd, but that's all I know. Is it is it online maybe? Don't know. You know, that's um, – I guess I could contact NCARB and see, but <clears throat> I'm just thinking that we have a February meeting and that's pretty quick to get everything together. Somehow we need to find that out. Yeah. Okay. We'll make a note to check in on that. Okay. Have they been real hesitant with the pandemic situation to say yes or no on, on meetings like that? But I know Rick uh, is at a meeting in Washington, D.C. right now with NCARB, so it sounds like they've opened up the travel restrictions they've had. Okay. I'll follow up with I'll follow up with them. Okay. When is the when is the Southern Zone meeting? What date do you have? April twenty first through the twenty third. You know how many funded delegates we have? But but Rob may have an exemption for being first time, and Ricky may have an exemption for being on the MBA board, or I guess board. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't go into detail. It doesn't say who. Um, 
It just says for the zone meeting, each board could submit three funded delegates. And you're already funded? Including yeah, that's you. what the, the next email says. Uh, this is, it reads like this. Let's see, I lost the line. Uh, but a reminder for you as an MBA, you do not need to CIDQ exam. All right, now I got my screen back. You do not need to name yourself as a funded delegate. MBAs are automatically funded. As an MBA, you will receive your funded invitation when registration opens in January. The three is in addition to you. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah, it does sound like that. And Maria. Can, I, for this one, we can wait, probably wait until February and wait and get the January invitations and then talk about it in February. I mean, again, I, I'm. No, you you had your head. No, that, I, I mean, I think uh, just uh, at your. Uh, if we need to have a quick Zoom call or something, Michael and Carlson, you know, at middle in next couple of weeks or something, or first of January to make sure we don't miss any deadlines. But just, I think Ricky's questions are very germane. Get some information. I think it'd be good if we all went. I mean, there's going to be five total board members. It'd be great if Maria would go. Uh, and obviously, it sounds like you're already in. Um, and, and But we will also have to ask for if there are some that are not funded, we would have to ask permission uh, from the administration. I mean, you know, possibly we would have one or two that would not be funded if you've got three funded and your other two exemptions are not in place. And, and then Maria would, would maybe a, another one. So um, I think let's try to... I will say that it's been my experience that most of the other member boards have all of their engineering committee members there, uh, as well as their MBAs and their attorney. I'm fine with that. I just, we, I, guess I, we I don't know how. To, we just I, need to get more information from yeah, them. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how. So, I've never asked Alabama or Kentucky or Oklahoma or Louisiana or any of the other ones that bring everybody how they do it whether the state funds it or whether they they have some other methodology for funding it. But I do know that most most of the other members of the Southern Zone have all of their engineering committee members there. Would, would we, Michael, do you want to check with NCES and see specifically about Rob's situation and mine as far as whether we would be taking a funded member spot? Um, you want me to check on that? I'm on, uh, well, I mean, I can ask him, but I, I'm not. What's the? So we premise? want to know uh, for the three funded member spots. Your your funding is not taking one of those three. Don't know whether Rob would because he would be a first time attendee, and they often fund that without including that in our in our number towards the three. And the same may be true of me on the MBA committee. They may be funding that outside of our three funded members. So if if they did that, then we, if they funded both of us, then Maria and Alton and Steve would all, they would take the three funded spots and we'd all be going. If they don't do that, then we would be probably asking if everybody can go, we'd be asking for the state to fund. I was going to say, I don't want to muddy the waters, but I know back in August, I believe, when they were going to do the New, York, New Orleans meeting, um, the attorney wasn't included. But then I think I got kind of invited like last minute, but then it was canceled. Right. So anyway, I don't know if they're doing things differently, maybe like limiting because of COVID. So I'm happy to go, but right. I don't want to take anybody's spot if, you know. Yeah, that understood. That's a good comment. Well, I guess right now we proceed like it's going to go back to being a normal zone meeting. And if it changes, it changes. I would encourage though, Maria to be there because they do have a separate legal session that I think has been very valuable to previous board member attorneys. The other thing is you can help keep us out of trouble and say stupid things. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't guarantee. You. Okay. never mind. <laughs> And Frank, you all have got, you need to know about your meeting too, whether it's you're going to be able and who's going to be able and all that. So that probably needs to be added to that. Just 
you know, maybe we all may have to do a little quick meetings thing. I don't know. I think we're going to have to um, fund a delegates. To qualify as a funded delegate, the individual must be a current board member and associate member. Uh, member board chairs must notify NCES in writing on board letterhead by January 12th if an associate member is to be designated as the voting delegate. Um, and this all, all of this stuff has to be done by January 12th. Okay. But we'll need to have a separate Zoom meeting. We will need that other information yeah. first. Yep. So okay. be prepared the next week or two. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, Michael, I guess you're still in the middle of your report. I know my hand catch up with my Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next item I have are the committees. I believe everyone, uh, apologies, I, I sent the PDF version of what Ricky sent me and not the updated version that I had created in Word and failed to save as a PDF. So you'll see Ricky's handwriting on this uh, committee assignment sheet here um, showing the changes which uh, if you all were to approve, this would go into effect for the next set of meetings. Um, but one thing I would like to bring up is, um, I believe that this board is capable of conducting and has in the past conducted a large amount of business in the full board. Um, I, meaning what I'm getting at is I think we can dissolve these standing committees with the exception of the grants to higher education um, because the full board has the capability to take these conversations on and discuss them. Um, to give you an example, laws and rules and policies, you know, rulemaking is done together. Maria brings it to us, everyone reviews it at the same time, it's part of the meeting packet. Um, the law and those laws and rules are those laws and rule changes are debated at the professional committee level they don't go to the laws and rules and policies committee they go to the professional committees and then Maria makes the changes and then the whole board sees it so I feel like we can we can lighten our committee load considerably by dissolving some of these standing committees you know another another point is the finance committee Finance committee doesn't see anything other than what you just saw. And there's no fiscal responsibility given to the finance committee. So I question whether or not it's necessary that we have a set meeting to see the same thing that the full board sees in the meeting. Is that, I, I'm open to discussion on this. Okay. But I'm, 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 yeah. I'm looking from a time saving perspective, we could theoretically move everything into one day as opposed to spreading it out over a day and a half no that healthy question uh robert i mean i'm not i don't disagree with you on especially finance committee it seems like that's kind of gone but we do need to look at it. we've got some board policies out there uh, and some kind of operating procedures i think that require certain things i know like on nominating committee it says they'll meet and come up with a slate of officers and present it to the board so if we're going to do some of those things, we probably need to have go back and amend those policies. And and I do think on a couple of these, it probably is good. And in nominations is one where that's I don't a, think that's a set formula, if I'm not mistaken. Correct? Well, no, there's there's some open. I mean, you can you can that is a formula for a couple positions, but not for all positions. And it just says an engineer. It doesn't say necessarily which engineer. It says an architect, but not which architect. I mean, there's so you've got option of three different architects or three different engineers to, to put in, and then it, then it says rotate to the uh, public member, interior design, whatever. I mean, it's got those things, but that's not, so you do have to talk about who that person is in that slot. Uh, sure. And do we want to have that debate here in the full board or do we want to go ahead and have that presented? I mean, that's, 
And again, just from a standard operating thing, we nominating committees usually exist in most organizations, most things to do that. And I'm just using that as an example. Finance, I'm fine with going away with, uh, but it seems like the nominating committee may be one of those that has to be there. Uh, somewhere we've got po policy because we wouldn't know what the order is. And just make sure those policies meet. You know, we can't just say let's get rid of the committee without amending those policies and amending our, our operating procedure. What, what I think that's, I'm, I'm probably using the wrong term, but. I believe that uh, that a number of these would potentially be necessary on a as needed basis, maybe uh, under the auspice of a special committee being con convened at, from time to time. Um, you know, I think like, you know, looking at it now again, I think, you know, grants and outreach, I think, are going to be um, necessary to meet on a semi-regular basis. Or at least I agree with the outreach. That was that's sort of a bigger issue that's separate from what this this board would want to take on in a meeting. Right, but you know definitions, right? So definitions committee is a standing committee technically, but once this set of definitions is done by hopefully by the next meeting, let's just say in theory there won't be a need for a definitions revision for say a decade. So. Do we need to have it as a standing committee, or can it be considered a special committee? But, and as but generally, needed? Michael, aren't the definitions under each one of the individual, like uh, architect, engineer, interior designer, landscape architect committees? Yeah, that's, that's where, where those are formulated. That's where they're formulated. So all we're really doing is taking what the professional committees have already said yes to and sending it to everybody else to basically say yes again. To, to send it, then send that, it to the full board it, for endorsement. Right. It's it's necessary right now. No, right I, now. No, right now, because just because we've gone through that process for each professional committee, but now it's time to coordinate. But I, I agree with you. They'll soon, hopefully, be not a need to meet. That that makes sense. Um, Blair, I, I, just quickly, I I thought that yesterday's definitions committee was very beneficial for me. To, to be able to discuss the other definitions and sort of compare it to ours, and it was beneficial. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a special committee that eventually it'll just go away until we need it again 10 years from now or right. whenever that is. So well, I and, and, and what we could do is, you know, again, this is, in my mind, this is a, an a, a attempt to save you all some time because I know you're all busy. You've got work to do. We've got work to do as well. So... If we're having five minute or 10 minute or even 20 minute meetings where we, you know, sometimes all of that stuff that we cover in that one committee meeting is covered again at the big board meeting. And so it's kind of redundant. You know, if we can just tack on that extra 10 minutes or so to the big board meeting and I can put it somewhere on the agenda as opposed to convening a committee where maybe you come at nine in the morning and then that you're not needed again until two in the afternoon we kind of blow in a whole day especially if you have to travel right Robert yeah uh, not to belabor anything but historically we've just those committees have just met except for the architect and the landscape architect or landscape whatever the architect and the landscape architect. but anyway they've they've historically only met like at the like laws and rules um, not have at the retreat so we've had a little extra time anyway so you know typically the grants committees just met that one time a year maybe twice so i don't know getting rid of the committees but i mean i don't know that we have to meet every time you know i, right, I, yeah. I think there's but but I, but anyway that there are the like finance committee i can see us not needing it because it's not it's not a um, it's not empowered yeah there's nothing that we're doing that that's going on there Right, and we can check the policies, but again, my, uh, you know, my my thought process is after seeing it now, seeing two Octobers, right, seeing the two separate uh, October meetings, most of what's talked about in these committees is already handled in the professional committee level, right, so that, that kind of the decision's kind of already been done, everything's been formulated, there's not a lot of extra business for the committee to do that the full board wouldn't do anyway so i'm just saying we could roll it all but you know again like i said it's this is a suggestion to try and streamline things um, Elton, 
I don't I don't know that some of these things again, I think a lot of these things like laws and rules, uh, continuing education definitions, most of those would be conducted at the professional committees. And then the professional committee could take that and, and present it to the full board with a recommendation. The grants to higher education, nominations, and outreach, I think, are somewhat independent of that. And I know generally in grants to higher education, this past time we met two, three times, actually, um, prior to coming back and making a recommendation to the board and doing all the evaluations and scoring and preparing the worksheet and and things of that nature. That that's a pretty busy one when when it meets, but we only meet really in that October to December time frame. Uh, kind of what June there's a meeting in June to establish the deadlines and close out the previous year. There's a meeting in September to uh, that's when everything comes in and then there's that next meeting in October after you all have had a chance to review the applications and the proposals to then come back in October so there's three meetings and then and then generally there are follow-up meetings because people fail to <laughs> they fail to ask or, or, or submit the right documentation or information and there we, we dance around with that for a little while and I, I know even up to December this time we were still formulating the final proposal for the uh, for the allocations my point is again with the exception of those three that I mentioned everything else is generally done at the professional committee meeting level and then recommended to the board anyway right including definitions and that's kind of my that's what I'm driving at you know that it's already it's it seems redundant to have a standing committee to reaffirm what's already been affirmed yeah. what well, I've got <clears throat> maybe call on Frank on continuing education you, you've been chairing that is what do you think I think it could go and okay. the reason I say that is you know over the past several years we've dealt with continuing <clears throat> continuing education uh, health, safety, and welfare requirements, and and so forth for for all of the um, different professions. But right now, I'm not seeing that there's a lot of need for any new uh, changes to what we have now. And qu uh, quick, quick question though: e even if there was, let's say for example, if the architects felt compelled that listen, the other states around us have increased their annual requirements for health, safety, and welfare-based continuing education. We need to take a look at that. Really, the architect committee would probably be the best served to do that and then come back and make a presentation to the board instead of... That's what I was fixing to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, uh, yeah, no, I was going to say it can go away. The thing about all of these is, um, you know, we could keep them all and you just meet whenever, you know, contact the uh, chair of each one, say y'all need to meet because generally, you know, even though we've had these committees, we don't meet every quarter. You know, we have them as needed. It's once a year. Yeah, typically right. it's like Robert said, the October <clears throat> retreat is when we met with these standing committees or if there was some pressing need, it would be out of the ordinary. I think some of these committees could be could be called if there is a uh, if there's a difference in opinion between uh, uh, one or more professions on a certain related issue um, but by and large from based on my experience here with you all that when the professional committees come out with a recommendation everybody else kind of says well you know what's best for your profession yeah. so there's and usually not a lot of dissension there's not and, and a lot of the laws and rules are separated engineers and architects you know so you're you're not affecting the other disciplines and and <clears throat> excuse me maria would obviously need to put her legal eyes on the policies or rules of the board to see that we're not messing up anything yes sir these committees have charters 
so not statutorily or in the rules, but there are bylaws of the board, which would just essentially be a policy. And yes, they, but they're not binding and you all have the discretion to amend the bylaws. Classic legal answer, uh, let me, it depends. Let me ask you again, <laughs> it, it depends, that's the answer, okay. <laughs> Committee, the study committees. Well, I, I just, committee, committee. Just I, I applaud you for this, and I think it could all be done in one day, except for special circumstances, which could be um, brought forward, uh, you know, a month before the upcoming board meeting, so people would know. And I think, I mean, they're they're all saying the same thing. It gets done. It gets done in the engineer or architect or landscape architect committee meeting and we could streamline the whole thing and I would applaud you for that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, what, what I've kind of, what I've heard is generally a feeling that the grants committee, the outreach committee, the nominations committee, and temporarily the definitions committee have a role to play and the others could go away and be absorbed into the disciplinary committees. But does that sound, is that sound? And I don't know <clears throat> whether we need to leave it there and, and check on any policies about what we need to do, what, what we're bound to do to have in committees and just have them like Frank said in name or whether we have, actually can abolish them. Maria, what, if you got a thought on that, should we, because what I was th thinking was whether we need to entertain a motion right now about committee. Well, if, if before Maria answers, yep. um, and I don't know if this would work or not, but if you all agree to it, we could do a vote today and pending Maria's analysis, it could go into effect potentially because you all would have already voted on it. Or if she comes back and says, can't happen, then it just can't happen. But that's up to you all. Okay. I, you know, I just, yeah, I, no. I mean, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of somebody that would I'd get it done with the card in the pocket, you know, just that's, in case if we can. Right, right. So well, the way I look at it, under the bylaws, there are standing committees, you know. Um, I don't necessarily see a reason to completely dissolve or abolish them by vote, but just not meet if there's nothing to meet on. We, yeah, we could agree. To and just then you say, just reconvene as needed. There's no mandate to meet keep, every time. What we could do is keep this committee assignment in the pocket, right? And And then if there's a difference let's say there's a continuing education issue that comes up and the the interior design doesn't agree with landscape architect then we convene a committee to take up the issue of the the dissension i, c I could see in the august meeting asking you know continuing education is there any need to meet in october and Generally, the answer is probably going to be no. Um, that doesn't seem to change that often, and so we can kind of tick down the committees like that. And I'm, hap I'm happy that to do that. Okay. You know, I maybe dissolving is is a little bit of a strong word, but just kind of right. put it put it in the cupboard, so yeah. to speak. I like that cupboard, uh, Robert. I don't think we need to vote on anything today. Uh, if we're going to do something different, let's come to the board next month with a proposal of what that might be. Um, and it sounds like we're probably not going to do anything different, but I just hate making a decision on something that we don't have all the information about from a policy, bylaw, whatever perspective with a, with a, a, a vote uh, right now. And I'm, I think we're all saying the same thing. My, understanding throughout my years in the board was we did not meet unless there was a reason to meet we didn't just meet just because it's a committee to meet and that is we have met at the board retreat just to make sure that 
we kind of set the course for the year. Uh, but I, we have very rarely have I seen beside the architect and the engineer and the interior and the uh, landscape architect committee that those are the ones that I'm more familiar with have met uh, with a time slot for the board meeting. So um, I think what you're saying is great. And I still think we could probably get rid of a finance committee, but I don't know what the bylaws say. And I would rather understand if there's anything else that has to be changed or looked at, or if we just make a, a not a policy, but kind of a general rule that we're just going to meet if we need to meet and not worry about it from there on. And I, and I think that's probably where we land, but sure. yeah, I would one. like to know more information before we have some sort of vote. That's just, that's my okay. perspective. Yeah, this, this, no, this good process for me triggered in this past October meeting when, you know, we had, yep. it, that was a pretty stacked, it's, it's a stacked calendar for right. two days. Right. And, you know, I'm just trying to think if we can, you know, if, if it, even three of these committees weren't meeting, that's three hours plus the breaks that are in between. So you're looking at almost four hours of time there that, you know, we could either focus somewhere else or right. not use. Uh, I, will, I will say Robert's comments kind of brought to mind the way the October meeting used to be used was as a the standing committees would meet once a year and it was it was not just a hey there's these issues that have cropped up it was a what if brainstorming time to plan it was used as a planning session and a what if what should we be thinking about that we're not thinking about <clears throat> so <clears throat> excuse me it did serve that purpose but you know again that's that can be taken into consideration on whether you know we don't need to meet sure. committee or okay not. so okay. we'll just charge maria with uh review of the policies okay you're welcome all right and then we'll revisit this with her um with her analysis in february okay sounds sounds good any other comments all right, well, why don't we close that? Good discussion, Michael. Thanks for bringing that up. You. Um, that's the last issue on your report. Have you, got, have you got anything more on director's report? Uh, yeah. We have, uh, just to give you a quick update from, uh, you know, staff perspective, all that sort of stuff. I know it, it came up a little bit yesterday, but uh, we do currently have one opening on the team we have that job opening posted it should close i think next week or maybe it closed no yeah next week um we hope to have um the eighth team member position filled before christmas that's going to take a little bit of time to get that person up to speed but um that's where we are on staffing so everyone's still Everyone's still kind of covering. We, we uh, you know, Cindy's retirement happened in between our past two meetings, as did Wanda's. Um, and so that was a, those were our top two producers in terms of overall volume. So we're, everyone is taking on bits and pieces and we're making it work. So uh, right now we're, we're stretched, but we're working on getting things up to speed. So if we're not, you know, if you find us to be untimely with anything, please let us know and uh, we'll get, you know, we'll get to it. All right, okay, there. Change of subject to some degree. It's my understanding that from this time on, we, the board members are gonna make our own hotel reservations. Yes, sir. And last night, the Holiday Inn wasn't real wild about my 2020 expirate expired uh identification <laughs> we can get so, we can get a a letter a letterhead that you all can present yeah we can do that we don't we don't need to have something messy where they don't <laughs> they, they don't approve of our id and then all of a sudden we get a, a higher rate so yeah, right just want to right make sure. thank you Blair. when you show your badge just put your finger over the ear <laughs> so, just you know hold it up like that, that. Mark. you can get the, no it's, I, it's I, all I, in the technique i'm not um, i'm not going to uh no Never mind. <laughs> well, we we are excited to work with the new staff. Um, uh, we think think every, all that will work out great. 
Good, so. good. Hey, and, and and just to back into uh, Mr. Parker's comment here about the hotels, um, the CONUS rates still apply no matter where you stay. Um, so if you go over that, that's something that you will incur. Um, by and large, I think they're, the rates are pretty fair, especially for Nashville. Um, and I know they fluctuate with the city because when we put that information in, certain cities give higher rates than others. Um, so the CONUS rates still apply, which but that opens you up to you can keep staying at the same hotel. You could reevaluate, I believe, like we were talking about earlier, that this Hampton Inn over here that's walkable. You know, I believe you can book right now for February for $178. So, I mean, it's it's all variable. It's up to you all. Um, but if you want to continue doing things the way you've been doing, that's that's your prerogative. But we will we'll get you a letter that says, you know, that you should be able to present that says you're traveling for state business and, you know, please apply okay. government rates where applicable. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Rick? Yes. See, hearing that discussion, uh, just polling the boards, does everybody want to go to the same hotel? And if so, do we want to try to, you know, I, it's convenient when we do. Um, do, do you want a Holiday Inn? Do you want to look at the Hampton Inn? I, you know, I've got a preference myself, but um, anybody got any comments on that? I think it's nice when I, you know, seeing everybody at the same hotel, it's, it's kind of convenient. And I've, I've been happy with the Holiday Inn Vanderbilt because I just know, you know, there's no learning curve and, the, right. and it's convenient and really convenient to get here. And I'm, I'm not going to walk with this big back, backpack anyway, but, um, but it would, uh, and this is just a straw poll, but would everybody agree that, uh, we would try to get reservations at the Holiday Inn? Vanderbilt. Let's, let's kind of see what availability looks like too. I mean, there's a couple other hotels in that area that, well, I mean, we don't have to, if we stay at the same hotel or nearby, I mean, we can still. I'm just thinking we'd need to do it pretty soon. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Hotel <laughs> fill yeah. up pretty quick. I don't okay. know how vastly traveled Nashville is in February, but yeah, I definitely in the, in the nice weather months. Well, mm. Maybe we did. Maybe a, with a show of hands or something. Who would who would be interested in staying at the same hotel? Is it? But we may not all be able to because you know they may only have for that particular right. date. There may only be so many right. rooms. And, you you know, mean they won't have a suite available for you? <laughs> well, <laughs> my secret so to cover that party I, suite. I'm also looking for pedicure, manicure <laughs> services. Party uh, suite. <laughs> What how, what do you think, Frank? How do we want to? I think that it would. I think everybody, you know, within the next couple of days, if possible, should go ahead and try to just book book. Okay. And yeah, just, they're generally and pretty just, just for the Wednesday night. Probably. Yes, sir. Yeah, and I think didn't somebody make the reservations for the rest of the year? One of you all? No. Okay. I did for February. Oh, okay. 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 So just just for Wednesday night. So we're not going to start early. We've got no need to start early on um, Wednesday like we did this meeting. Okay. No, I mean, when we've got five committees that need to meet. We'll, right. Right. You know, that's again that goes back to the as yeah. needed thing. But right. Okay. Um, no, no, that's that sounds good. Back to okay. kind of a normal meeting. Okay. So good, don't Frank. forget, under committee reports coming up here, we have the definitions committee. We should we, probably go last. Yes, I will. I got that. Let, let me say one quick thing, and this kind of goes. This is before your time, but uh, the the uh, thing that one of our former board members always looked for was a fr the free breakfast. So we, we need to <laughs> yeah. Make, yeah that, that may be something to factor in. But I, I always offered to buy that board member his <laughs> breakfast. So. <laughs> Took that away. Um, Okay, are we ready to move on to committee reports? All right, Interior Design Committee, Melanie. Good morning, thank you, Chairman. Um, the Interior Design Committee met yesterday. Our primary focus was the discussion of um, a definition that we um, 
had prepared a draft for and um, the committee discussed a number of options and made some amendments and some recommendations uh, before we submitted it to the definitions committee um, for their review following the interior design committee meeting um, and our uh, our focus was um, taking into consideration some recent activity in North Carolina um, and their legislation that passed um, for a practice act for interior designers. Um, it allowed them to stamp um, specific drawing types and so forth. Since we are um, not a practice act, we are a title act in Tennessee, um, CIDQ encouraged us to use um, North Carolina, some of their language in our definition, um, and we did incorporate some of that language in conjunction with CIDQ language. Also, um, Don Baltimore had prepared um, some uh, definition uh, proposals for us um, previously, and so some of that information was incorporated. And so where we stand with that is uh, Maria has that information. She is going to vet that for us, put it into a format that uh, follows the format of uh, the other rules, and, um, and we'll hopefully have a definition for legislative approval in February. I guess that's how it would go. And uh, I felt very good about the definition. Um, the committee was very responsive and supportive. So I really appreciate everyone's effort um, toward getting to that getting to that point finally. And uh, we're ready to see what Maria submits back to us. And that was pretty much the extent of our discussion. Okay, right. Any questions, comments for Melanie? Thanks, Melanie. Okay, uh, architect committee report. Um, we got our uh, uh, formatted uh, definition that we are, uh, we're still just looking over. We're still waiting for the uh, society. Uh, AIA is making some comments to it. So we're once we get those, uh, and then we will, you know, look at it again uh, in February. Also, we, we reviewed a, um, an application for uh, reinstatement, and we did go forward with that. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Brian. Any questions for Brian? All right. Uh, engineer committee report. Rob. Oh, <clears throat> we met yesterday. Uh, we <clears throat> reviewed an applicant uh, with a foreign degree and uh, approved his application for comedy. Uh, our potential laws and rules changes have been given to Maria and they've gone to the <clears throat> proper place and we are holding tight, I guess is the word for that. We discussed about communicating to our professional societies and were advised that we best not do that until the governor's office has approved our language. Um, and we did, um, <clears throat> we have uh, once again gone over the definitions. We love it like it is. We've submitted it to the definitions committee. Uh, we did have one change to add architect and landscape architect to one of our lines, but other than that, nothing of substance was changed. And that's all I have to report. Okay. All right. Any comments, questions for Rob? Okay. Outreach <coughs> committee. Steve. Yes, we did meet yesterday and continued our discussion about the newsletter. Uh, I think we've got a good plan going forward. Um, Michael has made contact with, I think it's called comms. Is that what? The communications department yeah. here in 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 house in in house to assist with with that uh, we have a 
newsletter that's available on the website that was from 2018 that we may be able to model it after to some degree, not necessarily being as long as it is, but one of the things that we'll be coming to board members for is to solicit suggestions for uh, member board member written articles for significant topics. I think one we talked about um, with uh, Melanie was the this issue of um, uh, is it interior architect or what's the is that the right term? And yes, possibly yes. Uh, asking her and one of the architect members to co-author an article about that issue. We think there will be some um, issues potentially coming out of session when it's over, potentially with the, the engineer's uh, suggestion uh, concerning the um, uh, pathways, the alternative pathways to licensure. Uh, there, there may be some other things, but the, the committee is is open to and, and wants the board's suggestions for those kind of articles. The, the, we plan to have the newsletter uh, possibly in the summer. We're going to shoot for doing it once a year, and then we'll see how it goes from that point, whether we uh, try to do it again. But since it's been a while, we're going to start with a goal of once a year. And if any, any of the other members of the committee have anything else to add, please do so. But I think that's a, a summary of what we did. Or Michael, do you have anything to add? Oh, I think that covers it. Very well. We're, Thank uh, you. Just everyone's, everyone's on notice that at some point you're going to end up writing a, a feature piece for this newsletter. Just pens out. Get the pens out and get yeah. going. Okay, not the pens. iPad. Robert. Yeah, Steve, thank you, and, and Michael and staff, thank you all for that. Uh, I think that's an important piece, this newsletter, and I think once a year is probably going to not be, I, I would probably think more because I just think we have more things that come up. And we in the past have written articles. I think most people that have been here for a little while have written an article or two that would be included, and that's kind of the main thing. But we do get questions from time to time about people um, from, from you know how many registrants that pass the test what, what are the statistics what who's been disciplined um, and there's some of those basic things that I think if we can kind of put in there on a fairly regular basis and I don't know what that means but uh, that really helps educate everybody kind of to the depth and breadth of what's going on within our societies and and uh, organ and uh, professions so um, again I, I, I think Everybody being on notice to write an article, we've got plenty of stuff to write about, and should that should not be a, a big deal. And it doesn't need to be a 14 page or however long. I think somebody said it was a pretty long thing. I think a couple pages is probably takes care of most of the information we need to to get by. That's just my opinion. But thank you all for pushing on that. Thanks. Um, I, I will mention um, being on that committee that. Um, I guess the timeline is everybody think about articles that you could write or want to see written, and we're going to try to make some hard assignments in the February meeting, in this board meeting. So we'll we'll make make assignments to people. And the other thing is with with it being once a year, um, we thought it'd be good to have some uh, every discipline have some uh, information in there and and we what what we talked about yesterday was having a feature article by one of the disciplines and the other three disciplines might have a link since it's going to be electronic this is the way we're heading it would have a link in there so that every newsletter we do since once a year we'll have something in there for each discipline so we talked talked about that okay any other comments okay Steve thanks Thanks for that. Uh, definitions committee. Thank you. Uh, the definitions committee met yesterday, and to, to paint the picture as we entered yesterday, Maria has gone through each of the definitions, and I won't say massage the words, but she's she's adjusted a few things here and there, and so we 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 come into yesterday with some definitions. But as the definitions committee met, we had not seen each other's definition. 
for me and the landscape architectural for the def the definition of landscape architecture was very beneficial to be able to discuss uh, the the definition that we had we currently have and not necessarily compare but look at the language that's being used with the other the other professions so it was very beneficial for for me and for the landscape architectural definition um, and I think that was one of the greatest part about yesterday's definitions committee meeting is that we were able to ask each other well why is this in there what why do you have this? what's the need for that and I say that with regard to landscape architecture there's a few sentences that I believe will be removed based on yesterday's committee meeting so it was very beneficial from our, our standpoint and I think it was everyone else's who was in attendance uh, in the end um, I, I believe that Maria has some uh, some homework to do some more massaging to do here and there and uh, we will come back to the committee and we will bring this back to the board as quickly as we can so we can um, put these definitions in the hopper. In between all that, though, we are also going to approach our our professional societies and have them weigh in on um, uh, the definitions that we that we have before us. So, so for the committee members, was anything else? Hey, Blair, thank you. We appreciate all the hard work on the definitions. Okay, that's all the committee reports. Uh, old business, do we have any old business? I didn't get any from the minutes that we needed to pick up on, but I'm happy to entertain anything. What about new business? New business, I guess uh, <clears throat> we don't have that on the agenda, but yeah, we could entertain new business. I guess we've kind of incorporated that <clears throat> in our discussions. Business gets sprinkled, sprinkled in here and there. That's right. But we keep notes. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. I was going to eat early today. <laughs> I, I'm I'm texting right now to say we might be there by eleven. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a good question. While we're all gathered here, uh, okay. Um, we'll, we'll, Is this where I get to call out anybody that hadn't paid me yet? No. Oh. We want we don't want to get that on the, the record. Over. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Well, well, with with that broach, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Moved. All right, a second. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you all, and uh, Merry Christmas. Same. And to you. Thank you.